Spirit with you. And with your spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, with, with uh, joy in our hearts, we continue to journey together during these days. In a special way, today we will hear about how the Lord draws all to himself as he promised uh, that, that when he was raised on the cross that he would draw all to himself. In a special way, today we hear about the invitation of, of, of the African eunuch, and so it, and that, that, that continual drawing of all nations and all people to himself. To prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to save sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forever intercede for us at the Father's right hand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, by God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your providence raised up Pope St. Pius V in your church, that the faith might be safeguarded and more fitting worship be offered to you, grant through his intercession that we may participate in your mysteries with lively faith and fruitful charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with the chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone else instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is the prep to prevent my being back? Loudly sound his praise, 
He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Alleluia. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in word, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Alleluia. Blessed be God, who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
but it builds on the foundations. And, the, and one of those foundations, of course, is the Word of God. It's right here. The, the bread of life that has come down from heaven, whoever believes has eternal life. And so we need to, you know, to, and that's, you know, one of our own weaknesses, you know, is we oftentimes point out, oh, Catholics don't know the scriptures. Well, that's not really true, but we do know the stories. I'll never forget these. We were doing the study on the, a little study on the Bible with young adults, I mean, on the rosary, and we got to the proclamation of the gospel by uh, the third luminous mystery. And I said, well, what are some of the parables? And the kids said, well, I don't, I, we don't know them. And they, you know, they're just like, oh, we don't know. We don't know the Bible. And they you know, poo poo ourselves and have bought into this idea that they didn't know the scripture. Well, before we were done, they had named 25 parables. They know the scriptures. We know the scriptures, but we, we don't have that confidence in the scriptures. And so we need to, to, to gain that confidence in our knowledge of the Word of God that's been nourished, we've been nourished on in Mass every week, but also in our homes, you know. Remember another one when we said, okay, you're, it's your turn to name all 20 mysteries, and this girl was like, oh, I can't do it. And, well, let's just start with the joyful mysteries. You know, what's the first one? Oh, I, I can't remember. It's the Annunciation. Oh, okay, what's that? Let's remember the angel of the Lord appeared. Oh, yeah, I remember that story. My mom told me, would tell me that story. And how the angel came and, and said she was going to be the mother of God. Yes, that's right. That's the story. You know it. You might not know the language, the vocabulary, but you know the scriptures. So let those stories, you know, go to those stories that you do know. Meditate on them. Let the Lord feed you with them. Don't be afraid to embrace the gift that has been given you of the Word of God that is in your heart. And keep studying. <laughs> it's not either or, it's both and. I'm still getting to know the Word of God. We all are. My friend, Father Augustine, 90, was 93 years old, and I, I forget, he says, you know, the other day we were praying the Psalms at the office, and we sang this line, and he quoted it to me, and said, it was like I had never heard it before. The, the, the Word of God is ever ancient and ever new, but always the same. Because it is Jesus. Father Augustine had sung that psalm thousands of times. The Lord has touched him that day. As Jesus said today, they shall all be taught by God. You know, so as we let the Holy Spirit, you know, God, the Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts, his word then becomes alive. Okay. And today we get a concrete example of that. Here is the Ethiopian eunuch studying the Word of God. He's reading it. And he says something very interesting. Well, how can I understand it if nobody's to instruct me? So that's the, there's two parts there. One is he's doing the work. And the second part is we want to understand it. And so there's two answers to his question. One is Philip is right there. God has provided a teacher. And there are lots of features to help you understand the Word of God. We do our, our scripture studies, our small group studies. There are lots of amazing books that we can read or now on YouTube and, and tapes that we can listen to. If you need help with that, let us know. We'll help you. We'll direct you to some good resources. The other, though, is that Jesus promises, I will give you another helper, another advocate, the Holy Spirit. And so when we want to read the Word of God, we're, we're invited to just stop and take a deep breath and say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Teach me through your Word. Now it's that same Holy Spirit that inspired the authors that wrote the Bible, that wrote the different letters and, and prophecies and such. 
that you are asking to guide you. So what better teacher than the actual author of the, the scriptures, the divine author of the scriptures himself, the Holy Spirit. And so here we are, Philip begins to teach. And of course, it's not just the whole of the G. Philip teaching, the Holy Spirit is already present because the Holy Spirit has drawn Philip and led him to, to, this, to this scene. And so the Google put up Bible said he was the Ethiopian eunuch. Well, he works, he's the treasurer and the court official for the Candace. Candace is the queen uh, of the Ethiopians. And that could be you know, literally the area that we think of as Ethiopia today. It also is a, it could be a generic term for all of, of the any sub-Saharan Africa. But uh, but it, it, nice, it goes in nicely with, with uh, the fulfillment of the scripture of, you remember the Queen of Sheba? You know, that's basically Ethiopia. And so, so she had come and, and, and the Lord in the scriptures and the Psalms too talks about how he will make all his people. And so here we are, we have this person that, this, this, this nation from the past that is now not just a, an ally with, with, um, with the people of God, but now it is a part of the people of God. You know, this fulfillment of the scriptures. Uh, he's a eunuch. Remember, Jesus said, you know, there's some eunuchs that are born that way, some that are made that way, and some that choose to be eunuchs for the kingdom of God. Uh, fun fact for you, the first canon from the, the Council of Nicaea, where we get the Nicene Creed, is that that is not to be taken literally, that some are made eunuchs for the kingdom of God. Uh, that, that, that it's prohibited to uh, to uh, self mutilation you know, or to make somebody a eunuch uh, physically for the kingdom of God. Uh, that it, that that is a, so that's one of those authoritative interpretations of the, the scripture by the church for us. But he is a eunuch, and uh, and that was normal to be. You know, that was a normal status to be or, or state life to be. But because of that um, reality, he wasn't allowed to be in the temple. He wasn't allowed to worship holy in the temple. You know, is he a full-fledged Jew? Well, maybe in his heart, he might just be what they call a God-fearer. But either way, because of his status as a eunuch, he wasn't allowed to enter the temple to worship. Beautifully, here he is. You know, was, he, was he just there on business? It doesn't tell us. You know, was he just there as the, as the you know, emissary of the treasury? You know, or was he there you know, seeking the Lord? Was he on pilgrimage? One of the things we know about pilgrimage is a deep part of our faith. You know, and, and it's interesting. The Lord uh, has built pilgrimage into our faith, faith from the beginning. I mean, we see, you know, Abraham, our father, being called to, to journey away from his own home to make a new one. But, you know, in the law of Moses, they're called to pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the feasts. And when we go on pilgrimage, it, it excites our faith. And God does amazing things during pilgrimages. You know, sometimes we think, wow, well, that's awful lot of money. But yeah, that's right. But if we, you know, if we are being generous with the poor and such, and we have the funds to make a pilgrimage, or we, we save our money and you know, make those sacrifices to, to go on a pilgrimage, then the Lord blesses that. And our faith is excited, and the pilgrimage doesn't have to be to the Holy Land or to a Marian shrine, you know, in Europe. You can make a pilgrimage here in Oregon. Make a pilgrimage to the Brigidines or to the Carmelites or to the Mount Angel or to the uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe in Lafayette. You know, those are just a few. Or in the South, we've got the, you know, the, the um, the St. Bridget Retreat Center down there. There's a lot of religious pilgrimage sites here in Oregon. 
And when we make a pilgrimage, we open our heart in a unique way. God, touch me. And we're making room for the Holy Spirit. And here this Ethiopian, let's just presume he's come on pilgrimage to, 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 to worship near the temple as close as he can. He might have been worshiping where you know, the Western Wall of Jerusalem today is the foundations of the platform. It's not even the temple itself. You know, maybe that's where he worshiped, outside of the temple complex, down at the base. Maybe he put his little parchment in the, in the stone. The Lord rewards you by sending Philip to reveal the fullness of the scriptures. You know, and it says that he, he interpreted the scriptures for him, you know, and you just wonder, well, what did Philip say to him? The first thing is he was ripe and ready because he, we, you know, we've gotten that part. You know, it's hard to, to proclaim the gospel to somebody that's not ripe. Starts with this passage, probably in Isaiah 53, where he is of the Jesus is the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. I invite you to read Isaiah 53. It's a passage that will be very familiar to you, but helps you to understand. Well, what is the heart of the gospel? Isaiah 53. Sometimes Isaiah is called the proto gospel, the, the pre gospel. And Philip says, well, what is there to stop me from being baptized? And sometimes, uh, I guess I should say, usually when I've read that, I always thought about it in terms of, well, there's some water, let's do this. But another way of reading it uh, is, is, well, there's some water, you know, is there anything that prevents me from being baptized? You know, it's parking back to the beginning. If I'm a eunuch, am I allowed to be baptized? I just was in Jerusalem and I couldn't even go to the temple. Can I be baptized too? And the answer is yes. Wow. You can be baptized. There's nothing in your life that should prevent you from being baptized if you so desire to seek the Lord. But I'm not perfect. That's right. That's why we have a Savior. And beautifully, a couple chapters down the road, I think it's 56, that even you know, if, he, if the eunuch kept reading his Isaiah after going back on the road, he would have got to the place where it says, and the eunuchs will be made whole in, in, Jesus, in, the, in the Messiah. And all nations will be made a part of him. You can just imagine, like, that's me! That's me! It's been fulfilled! Well, here we go. This is one of those just beautiful places where the Holy Spirit's been at work. And may we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit and His Word to, to teach us and to touch our hearts. And to recognize that the Spirit is still alive and at work, and that His scriptures are still alive and at work in our hearts. Let us pray. Especially when we use the intentions that have been sent to us via Facebook, which you can do as well. For all those having surgical procedures coming up and for those in the hospital, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the gift of life that God gives us with his blessing each day, especially for the babies being born at this time, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the health of our families and loved ones, may God protect them in this time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the health of Ramona Torres, Sandra Morales, those in, with the virus, and for all those who are struggling with receiving health care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those experiencing a financial burden, 
May God provide for them and fill them with faith and support them by the community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are breathing life, breathing their last breath today, may God receive their soul into glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the, for the church that we might continue to proclaim the word and teach those who uh, are seeking you, Lord, and, and, uh, and be open to the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy God, we present these and all petitions of our faith in our hearts in faith and confidence. For we ask in the name of the risen Lord for the intercession of St. Philip, for the Ethiopian eunuch, and all the saints. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Behold the Lamb of God, the only one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Hallelujah. Um. Hallelujah. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those who have been viewed with heavenly mystery to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow for the blessing. O Lord, look upon the prayers of your family and grant them the assistance they humbly implore, so that strengthened by the help they need, they may persevere in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And you can do another one because I read the one, not the one I could prepare. <laughs> in defense of your children, O Lord, we pray, stretch forth your right hand, the right hand of your majesty, so that obeying your fatherly will, they may have the unfailing protection of your fatherly care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, 
by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Oh. 